Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this pack video short, we're going to discuss facilitation online versus being face to face. The PACT processes. PACT is an acronym. It stands for performance based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven, training and development of any blend. The 12 facilitation rules and guidelines are intended to help you facilitate a group of master performers and subject matter experts, as well as novice performers and sometimes supervisors and managers. The first thing to do is to change guideline number 10. Be legible on the flip chart. If you're doing this online, it's unlikely that you're using a flip chart unless you set up a camera to capture you capturing things on a flip chart. More likely you're using some sort of a drawing tool or a document and just capturing it and typing it in so that everybody can see what's being captured. That's the intent of the process is to make everything visible. When you ask a question about what's the key output of the analysis phase and somebody says the analysis report, you want to write that down so everybody knows that you got it. They might say, well, we call it an analysis document. And so you want to scratch out report and write document. Or if you're typing it, erase, backspace, report, and type in document. But there may be drawing tools that you're using. It always depends on what's available to you. Online. It's even more important to go slow, to go fast. If you can't see the faces and the facial expressions of the people in your meeting, it's difficult for you to know when to speed up. You don't know if everybody's on board and you can start rocking and rolling versus going slow. I always feel that you have to ask everybody and check in with them. This extends the amount of time that you're going to spend in this kind of a facilitation versus gathering data, but it's critical. Otherwise, you'll get garbage in, which means you'll be producing garbage later. So go slow to go fast. Pull the group. Ask them. Ask everybody to check in. Provide a list of everybody in alphabetical order or by height or something to let them know that we're going to be doing round robins. And you're going to ask person number one, are you okay with this? Person number two, anything do you have to say? Person number three, are we ready to go? Any questions? Anything that needs additional clarification? Please help me. Person number four, are you okay? Anything that you want to contribute at this point? You're going to have to do that a lot. Whereas in a group face-to-face -face meeting, you can simply do a face poll and ask people to nod in the affirmative, in the negative, or diagonally if they're just not quite sure whether it's positive or negative. Being declarative is the same online as it is face-to-face. -face. Writing stuff down and posting it is important. If you are not a good typist, if you can't word process quickly enough, then find somebody to work with you to do that as you facilitate the meeting. Make sure that they are listening and trying to capture exactly what was said. Now there can be a free-for-all on an online mechanism, on an online tool, and you may have to go round robin or you may have to declare to ask person number four, what is, what's your answer to my question here? We'll start with you this time. And direct and control all of the process. Being redundant by design is important when you can't see people's eyes and their facial expressions. So you need to be redundant to make sure that everybody has a good enough chance to really get on board, to have shared understanding with what's going on, with what was just said, or what was just captured, etc. It's even more critical, I think, to use these four key behavior types. Giving information and declaring yourself that, let me give you some information here. Let me seek some information here. Let me ask some questions here of you all preface what you're going to do before you do it. Let me test my understanding. Let me summarize here so everybody knows that's what's coming. If there's an attack, if people are in a disagreement, it's not always such an attack, but if people are disagreeing and you're afraid that a fight is going to break out and, and people can just shut down more readily online 
than if they're in a room because it's very visible that they've shut down, and so they tend not to want to do that. But if people are shutting down online, it's going to be up to you to bring them back together, to re-engage them. This is tricky. Dealing with a defend and attack spiral, as we said before, requires that you intervene, that you ask some clarifying questions about the positions that the two people are taking. You're looking for common ground if there is some. If there isn't any, then what you need to do is document it both ways. There's a disagreement here. Some people are saying plus, some people are saying minus. Let me capture that both. We're not going to take the time to resolve that here. I'm going to take that to the steering team later on. And since you all know I'm going to ask the steering team to resolve this, you might want to lobby for your position with the project steering team member that handpicked you, that volunteered you to be in this meeting, to be in this process. Review and preview is the same thing online as face-to-face. -face. You need to tell people when we're transitioning what we're doing, let's review what we did, let's preview where we're going with things and how that ties to the things that we've just done and how that ties to the things that come later on. Write it down and discuss it. I think the same rule applies online. When somebody volunteers something, write it down. Type it on the screen so that everybody can see it. It's not a nebulous concept that's floating around in the air. It's been made black and white or red and white, depending on whatever color you're using for your text. But write it down and then discuss it and then change it as needed. And make sure that everybody concurs and agrees with how it was captured. And if they don't, make sure you capture that as well. Use humor. Again, be the butt of your own jokes. It's more difficult online unless you know people and you can make fun of them. If they start making fun of you online, then I think they're open game. But you have to be careful with that and make sure that the balance is that you're making yourself the butt of most of the jokes, most of the humor, more so than anybody else in the meeting. Control the process and the participants. If people are not participating, and you're a little bit worried that they're checking emails or on some social media, check in with them. Ask them to participate. Ask them a question directly. Call them out by name with your question. Be legible with the drawing tools or whatever you're using to capture the data. Make sure that if you're using some sort of handwriting tool that, and drawing tool, that things are clear enough for everybody. Take the time to do this right, even though it might take a little bit more, and even if you're feeling a little pressed for time. Manage your time, but make sure that what you're doing is legible. People can't concede to something if they don't understand what it is. If you scribbled something online, and I'm looking at it on the screen, and you're asking me to confirm that, I'm likely to say, yeah, I agree, when I don't even know what the heck it is that you wrote down. Avoid that. Make sure things are legible. Beware of groupthink. Online, I think this is easier to see because you'll get a dominance from one person and everybody can see to it. And if nobody volunteers a contrary view or an embellishment, you probably got groupthink going and the group is becoming passive. It's just easier than active participation. Beware of groupthink and talk about it with the group. Talk about how that's not necessarily good nor desirable. What you're looking for here is to build a set of data that's conceded to by the entire group. I often tell groups that their name is going to go on the report. If we produce a bunch of hoo-ha, garbage, then it's going to reflect poorly on them because how would I, the facilitator, know? I don't do that job for a living. I don't understand that job, especially at a nuanced level. They're going to be the ones who are going to be held accountable for this being good stuff or garbage. Gigo. Assigning parking lot valet. This may be a little bit more difficult when you're in an online environment, but you can ask people to text you, to send you an email, to and to send it to the entire group and copy the entire group so that we know what the issues are. Or we can create another document online 
and capture those things. If they text message us these things, if they put it in the chat box, if they send us an email, we can cut and paste it into a document that everybody can go look at to see where are we in those things. And create a visible line, a bold red line or something between the open parking lot and the closed parking lot so that people can see that we're actually addressing some of these issues and concerns that may have been brought up and moving them from open to closed. The 12 rules and guidelines for the PAC facilitator are intended to help you facilitate a group of master performers, other subject matter experts, and perhaps novice performers and managers and supervisors of the target audience. Beware of giggle. Garbage in, garbage out. Always strive for good stuff in and good stuff out. I've been practicing, publishing, and presenting on these methods since 1982. My recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in great detail.